so many canics. <laughs> it seems like there's at least a new model a year, every year at least in the five or six years that I've been doing stuff with them. Got nine of them here, and I'm going to break down how to pick your canic. Coming up next on GB Go. This started as an article over on gbgunsdepot.com, a uh, link will be in the video description, where I break down these nine models that I still have, um, the generational changes, the traits and features, how when you might want one over another, as well as give you the links as to where you can find them at what prices by model. It was a lot of work, it's been well received, but a lot of you said, hey, can you do that in a video form? So here we are. While all Canics are great guns and have been greatly loved over the years, developing somewhat of a cult following, nice transition from the early, uh, I don't know if I can trust that, there have been some changes throughout the models, and it's not necessarily just by model name that you would expect. In fact, I've found cross examples throughout all of them. But there are three generations. This is an official statement. This is not from Canic. This is what I've noticed as somebody who evaluates guns and has spent a lot of time with the Canics. The first generation that I'm calling it, the examples that I have are the TV9 SFX and the TV9 DA. They're observable by having only one side of slide release. It's not ambi. There's no real type of loaded chamber indicator. Yes, the external extractor does protrude a little bit, but not like we see in the other guns. Additionally, the back straps, though interchangeable, are what I'm calling the skinny tail. See how these black back straps come down to a skinny part through there, and then the pins there. That means that when you change them out, you're only changing from here to here versus changing the whole thing. This is later revised. Optics Ready was not quite the trendy thing that it is now then, but the SFX, as you see here, did come with an optics ready variant. Generation 2, as I'm calling them, that skinny tail backstrap has been replaced with a backstrap that replaces all the way down to the end, so you can change the full side of the grip. This is also the first time that we saw 15 round frames, the other ones being 18 rounders. You get ambidextrous slide release, and the loaded chamber indicators started to appear. The examples that I have here are the TV9 SF Elite, the SS, SF Elite SC, the Elite Combat, and the Elite Combat Executive. These were, or are, a partnership with Salient Arms. Uh, you've got uh, threaded barrels on them, a magwell that kind of does its job, but not really. As you can see there, it, it's not a huge thing. What I liked about this magwell, though, is it did manage to give my fingers a way to pinch into the, the gun pretty well. You also had an aluminum flat face trigger on these with serrations running flip this way for the light vertically on it. Uh, the trigger itself is the same, at least as far as I can tell. It's just the shoe or the part that your finger interacts with is different, feels different, and so creates a different shooting experience. One more note on these second generation guns is it is where we started to see a little bit of a second undercut on the trigger guard. You can see this SF Elite flat trigger guard on the SC. Little bit of relief there, a little bit of cut. And that brings us to generation three, which can be seen in the Mete models and the Rival. As far as how the changes have been done in both the Rival tabletop and in the Mete SFX tabletop video, you can see the three SFXs lined up to see the differences. But on our generational thing, we've got quite a bit more undercut of the trigger guard here, a change in the texture, gone are the squares, and now we have the texture all the way around. Um, of course, our full size backstrap changes, and the movement to these pins, which are dimpled to make field stripping and getting all the way down to a bear strip a whole lot easier than dealing with roll pins. Loaded chamber indicators are shorter and up top. All of these models are optics ready and compatible. And it's basically the latest and greatest current of them. With the rival, we saw a return of the aluminum flat face trigger. However, it's different than you saw on the Leets. There we go, light can hit it. You can see it's a cross hatch pattern that provides quite a bit more tra traction, in my opinion, and feels pretty darn nice. We also got a new magazine well on these that 
as you can see, really is a funnel. It's extending all the way out. The lines continue with the line of the frame itself. So it really feeds the magazine in and provides a little bit extra toe just in case your hand is big enough to be able to use that for applying pressure and keeping your hand on the gun. As it tries to recoil, that magazine well hooks on your finger and doesn't allow the gun to flip within your hand, which is pretty nice. So far with the Gen 3 guns, all we're getting are uh, 18 plus round size frames. No compacts or subcompacts yet, though I'm willing to bet that they're going to happen. Now we'll dive into the guns by their application or size range, if you will. The smallest available currently is the Elite SC. SC is in subcompact, coming with a 12 round magazine and a 15 round magazine. 12 rounder does have a pinky rest on there to allow two and a half finger grip for my double XL size hands. We've got a 3.6 3 inch sized barrel. Why not anything smaller? Well, that's, that's up to a very complicated issue with the ATF. You see, imported firearms, especially pistols, have to meet certain sporting use requirements. And there's a point system they have to meet, and it has to do with the weight of the gun, the length of the barrel, the size of the grip, safety features, things like that. Which is why traditionally when you've seen guns smaller than this that are imported, they have some sort of added on like magazine disconnect safety or other annoyance thing like that. The solution for many companies has been to make enough of the gun here in the US that it's a US gun and then just import the rest of the parts for it to keep the standard brand. But that's a complicated mess. Anyways, whether or not we're going to see anything smaller than this out of Canik, that's a ATF Century Arms thing that is just a big old hassle. For now, if you want something small, 3.6 inch, 12 rounder, the Elite SC is your option. Moving into what's classically considered a compact, around a four inch barrel and a 15 round capacity, we've got the SF Elite and the two uh, Elite Combats, the Standard and the Executive. These are your all-round go-to size. They're something that can be carried, but also is pleasant on the range or can be used in training. In fact, Tia and I took these two with us to the Center T pistol course a couple years back and did great with them. Uh, they were, that was a combination pistol and AK course, and so sidearm pistol wasn't going to be the dominant thing. Didn't want to have a giant one with us, even though bigger guns are usually more comfortable to shoot. So we brought these, and they were excellent. Moving into the, what I call the duty category, and keep in mind, just like the generations, these categories are what I'm making up as a way to break these down and help explain them to you. So if you don't agree with them, that's fine. You can let us know in the comments below, but this is the way I'm running the video. So duty, we're gonna have four plus inch barrel and a frame that is full size, that is meaning for 17 or 18 round mags. This of course has a plus two on it, so it's a 20 rounder. And that leaves us with the TB9DA and the Mete SFT. TB9DA, by the way, is pretty much your only option if you're looking for a Walther P99 style three trigger mode gun without getting a used Walther, since Walther's not bringing very many of those into the US anymore and hasn't updated the style in a long time. Just real quick, in case you weren't sure, that click there, that's the anti-stress mode. See how I give you a pause? Gives you a nice, crisp, single action, short reset to continue on. However, you can also decock by pushing this button and you see the striker is gone now and that gives us a full double action weight and pull. When I carried the P99, I carried it like this. So I had a double action first shot and then every shot thereafter, short and quick effectively works as a nice safety. It's a cool system that unfortunately not a lot of Americans seemed to grasp or catch onto. They either wanted a DASA hammer gun or a striker gun. This is the best of both worlds, so pretty neat. The Mete SFT jumps us to the third generation from that first generation gun, where we've got that double undercut on the trigger guard, the enhanced traction uh, with the grip, all of those evolutions that I've explained in the tabletop videos of these guns now in a third generation platform. A little more barrel, a little more grip. If you want actual specifics or what these things cost, that's all in that article. And now we move into what I'm calling sort of the competition size of gun. That's an 18 round grip and a five plus inch barrel. 
uh, 5.2 inch on the SFX go with a threaded barrel and you get even longer on there. Why is that uh, a thing? Well, long barrels give you more energy on target, great for knocking over steel or getting a positive resounding ding of it hitting steel because the bolt's going faster. Uh, you also get a longer sight radius for those of us still using irons. Long sight radius makes it easy to aim, uh, a lot easier to be more precise. And the extra reciprocating mass and the slower rate at, at which long slides function tends to be a smoother recoil impulse. So that also makes follow-up shots a little bit quicker. In this category, there's the, class, the classic SFX. And then in Gen 3, we have the Mete SFX and the Rival. This one happens to be dark side with an aftermarket available uh, Canic threaded barrel in the uh, gold coating that just looks sharp, I think, also. I like it sticking out a little bit. So uh, your choice between these is really going to come down to budget and which features you want. Uh, these three guns, or at least the SFX line, I guess to say, I think has a lot to do with what has made Canic become so popular because competitive sports are very expensive to get into, very expensive to stay in, and the SFX was really the first competition ready, out of the box, affordable gun. Uh, that's also just a blast to shoot. Uh, it wasn't something you had to take out a second mortgage if you wanted to try competing. So that's what these are great for. Uh, we've also run them in courses. Uh, it's kind of cheating, but uh, lets you really focus on learning the craft uh, instead of worrying about your gun um, or soaking up recoil, things like that. Great for training, uh, great home defense, competition, Maybe a little bit large and heavy for carry or duty, but that's really up to you. It's a personal preference. So that wraps up the Witch Canic or Canic Guide. Once again, check the uh, link in the video description for gbgunsdepot.com. That's where the article is that goes in a little more depth on all of these. Also links to all of the videos we've done on these over the year, at least most of them. Uh, and where to find them and what the current pricing is. Keep in mind, prices fluctuate. But I think they're darn good guns, obviously. I've kept all of these. And uh, I'm happy to see more folks jump on board with Canic. I've said a few things that I'm sure a few of you disagree with. If so, let us know in the comment section. Just make sure you've got a good argument. Thanks for watching.